ISLE has special emphasis on teaching the nature of science and works pretty well there. In a recent evaluation conducted at Princeton University by Katharina Wisnitsch and her colleagues, language and augmentation skills also improved. But when you remember the study of Mackenfuß, you will recall that a lot of students do not see their place in science. Why should they investigate a phenomenon in the first place? The 5E model addresses just that. 5E has a different point of entry. The five phases are easy to learn. Engage, explore, explain, elaborate, evaluate. Now guess why they call it the 5E model. Uh, the 5E model is no rocket science until it is. The National Aeronautic and Space Administration has adopted the 5E instructional model for their NASA Eclipse. They claim that the 5E constructivist learning cycle helps students to build their own understanding from experiences and new ideas. It would be used for problem project-based learning and it is useful as a universal design for learning, UDL. And this is a very important concept for inclusive teaching and learning. But constructivists' learning cycles are not new. One of the authors of the 5E cycle is the former science teacher Roger Bybee. Bybee was consultant for the development of the PISA test and writing team leader of the Next Generation Science Standards NGSS for the USA. In a very concise paper that is cited in the links below, Bybee links the development of 5E down to the German philosopher Johann Friedrich Herbart and the early American constructivist John Dewey. The idea to put exploration, invention and discovery into the center of a learning cycle was developed in the 1950s by the theoretical physicist Robert Kaplas in Berkeley, California. This uh, SCIS learning cycle proved very successful in studies by Robert Gajni, Lawson, Abraham and Renner to name a few. Let's put the 5E cycle to work using strawberries. Everybody loves strawberries. Remember plucking them out and tasting them out of your garden or of the garden of your neighbor. But the climate is changing. In many parts of the earth, the summer gets very hot, the winter gets very cold, and there's not enough water raining down. So we should do something to save the strawberries for the future. What do strawberries actually need to grow and to be juicy? Let's explore this. Put together what we already know and look inside the box to explore what we can find out. Theory says the more possibilities the students can explore, the more creativity is sparked. According to Piaget, you would need a toolbox with a broad range of sensors and actors. Yet, these sensors and actors, they have to be intrinsically safe to give the students the possibility to explore, to come up with different solutions without you as a teacher always standing in the back behind them. This is a soil moisture sensor. It measures the conductivity of the soil. And if you are a physics teacher, you might want your students to research just this, because conductivity is an important topic both in physics and engineering. But what can we do with this soil moisture sensor? Perhaps students already know that plants need some water, so we can test if there's enough water in the soil. And if not, there's perhaps a water pump or something, so we can add more water to the soil and look how that works. Now, if I see this light sensor here, light is another thing that plants need to grow. At least, that's what we heard. So challenge this and test it. If it is right, the plant should grow even faster when we control the light with some sort of a light source. And hey, there is one. Now, there's a sensor for temperature. And perhaps, oh, you see, the list of possibilities to explore and to measure and to record goes on and on and on. But in the exploring stage of the 5E model, as well as in the ISLE, we try to form testable hypotheses and discuss them based on the recorded data. Students should not play around indiscriminately with no goal in mind. They should suspend judgment and they should not stop with one solution that perhaps one of the most influential kids came up with. 
When we started the measurement, the system started to behave strangely after about 45 minutes. What is going on there? In our example, the students could explain this by looking at the data set and compare this to the system behavior. So it was easy to see when the soil moisture was less than 50%, that was the threshold value, the pump started to pump water into the pot. But it takes some time until the water reaches the sensor. In the meantime, the system kept on pumping water until the bottle was empty. So by exploring with the toolbox and a pot of strawberries, we went straight into control theory, which is usually covered in engineering in higher semesters. We can elaborate this. What is actually the range where strawberries can exist? At what value should we start the pump? When should we stop the pump? Then we do not want to waste water. At the end, we can evaluate our system using criteria that the students themselves have developed. Did we save some water? Does the plant grow any faster? Does the fruit look healthy and juicy? Remember, it is a cycle. So we could start right over again to design another system with what we have just learned. For controlling the effect of our 5E instruction design, I recommend using an empathy map canvas. After all, it is important how the student experienced the lesson and its task, what the student heard and see, what the student actually did, and what the student learned from it. Part-taking observations, interviews and recordings are also very helpful. In this paper about origin and effectiveness of the 5E model, I've linked it below, Roger Bybee published an interesting table. You can easily track when your 5E lessons work and when it does not work. This can regard to the behavior of students or of the behavior of the teacher. Check it out.